Welcome to Matt's Metalworking. In this video here, I'll be going over two different methods on how to polish aluminum. There is different ways to polish aluminum, depending on what surface type you're working with or what materials you have on hand. How much time you devote to polishing will also show the end results. First, I'm polishing a switch panel. I'm wanting to achieve a mirror-like finish. Having the part prepped first is important. All the work that you wanted to have done is completed before moving on to the polishing process. Then the part is washed to remove any contaminants. I have a bucket of water and I'll be using wet dry compatible sandpaper. The sandpaper is pre-soaked before we start. Only use wet dry compatible sandpaper as it's able to withstand the water exposure and not fall apart. A backing pad is also required on a flat surface so you don't create any deformities. Depending on the surface damage or the current finish, this will affect what type of grit you start with. This was new aluminum flat bar, so there's no need to remove any previous coatings. The surface is fairly clean and free of any damage. Therefore, I'll be starting out with 800 grit. Water is applied to the surface to provide lubrication. This also keeps down any dust, and that is important as aluminum can be a health hazard. If you do have an uneven surface, there is a previous coating, or there is surface damage, then I would recommend starting out with 400 or 600 grit sandpaper. The smaller the number of grit, the coarser the sandpaper. This also means that there is more work removing those coarser sanding marks and you will need to gradually move up on the grit ratings. The 800 grit should remove a majority of the surface imperfections and this will be the longest sanding grit. Once done I have dried off the part so you can see the surface finish. Now moving on to 1000 grit sandpaper. Again the sandpaper is also pre-soaked, water is applied to the surface of the material Use the backing pad to work evenly across a surface. The direction of your sanding marks doesn't really matter. Make sure you do go evenly across the part and rinse the sandpaper and part as needed. As you sand you will notice some material being removed and this is perfectly normal. After the 1000 grit has been finalized you can see the surface finish once the part has been dried. Now moving on to 1500 grit. Again this is the exact same process. As we move up to a higher grit rating, each of these stages should only take a few minutes. Water is applied to the part and the sandpaper is also pre-soaked. If you are working with curved parts, you can use a foam backer instead. Using your hand is also an option, however keep in mind that this can cause deformities in a flat surface if you're not careful. After the 1500 grit sanding process has been completed, here is the surface finish you can see the sanding marks are becoming finer and finer. 2000 grit is the next step. Always make sure that part is well lubricated with water and rinse as needed. Make sure no contaminants come in contact with the sanding process as you can put deep scratches in the surface. If deep scratches are put into the surface, you will need to start over. How much time you devote towards this will affect the quality of the polished surface after. Light to medium pressure is only needed when wet sanding. After we're done with the 2000 grit sandpaper, here is the surface finish. Finally is 3000 grit sandpaper. This is optional, you can stop at 2000 grit. However, this will involve more polishing then. Evenly work across a surface, this only takes a few minutes. Once done, here is the final surface finish. The part was washed before we move on to the polishing process. Now for polishing the aluminum, there are various products available on the market. I've had good luck with aluminum polish from Mothers. Apply it to a soft cloth and work it into the surface. Work in multiple directions. Eventually the polish will turn black which is perfectly normal. I would highly recommend wearing gloves for this as it can get quite messy. This is being done by hand, however a machine polisher can also be used and I'll show you that further on in the video. This is by far the most work intensive part when polishing aluminum. However, you can see the final results when done. I typically like to finish up with a microfiber cloth at the very end to remove any smudges and give that final shine. The more time you spend on this, the better the clarity will be with the polished surface. No sealer is required here. However, depending on the exposure, you may need a light polish every couple years. Moving on to an alternative method to using sandpaper. Again, I have raw aluminum. This is a fender on a trailer. There are some marks from the rocks towards the front of the fender and that can only be removed when using sandpaper. Instead of sandpaper, here I'm using a scuffing pad. These are made by Scotch-Brite. 
The fender was washed to remove any contaminants and then I'll be starting out with the maroon pad which is rated at 400 grit. Again this is pre-soaked and water is applied to the fender to keep the dust down and provide a smoother sanded surface. This will only take a few minutes. Using a scuffing pad will work better on an uneven surface however it won't make a clearer mirror finish at the end. This won't take the surface down evenly. Rinse the part and scuffing pad is needed. Once done here you can see the aluminum is slowly changing its finish. The fender has water applied again and next is moving on to the green scuffing pad which is rated at 600 grit. Same process as previously, work evenly across the surface and rinse as needed. As mentioned a moment ago, these scuffing pads will not remove any irregular surface damage but rather work around it. After I'm done with the 600 grit scuffing pad, here you can see the surface finish. Finally is a white scuffing pad which is rated at 1000 grit. I do find the scuffing pad does take more time than compared to the 1000 grit sandpaper. You will notice the surface finish greatly improved with the finer sanding marks and providing a more satin finish. The fender is finally rinsed off and dried before moving on to the polishing compound. I am using the same aluminum polish as previously, this time around I will be using a machine polisher with a wool pad. This too can be messy as the pad can throw the sling around, so be mindful of where you're working. Again, work the polish into the surface, only apply light to medium pressure. You will notice the polish becoming black, which is perfectly normal. I did get some of this residue on the painted panel, and it tends to be harder to remove. Taping adjacent surfaces would certainly be a good option if you're trying to avoid that. Apply more polish as needed, and then finally wipe off using a clean cloth. A final polish can be done by hand if you wish. Once done, you can see the final outcome. You can see there are some surface marks along with deformities, not giving a perfect mirror image. As mentioned earlier, your final results will depend on how much time you invest. However, when you use these abrasive pads, these won't achieve as good of a finish as compared to sandpaper. This concludes the rest of my video. I hope you enjoyed it. Please leave a comment below and throw a like my way. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more metalworking videos. Thank you for watching.